So moving on from, uh, um, most of us are geeks over here, but uh, trying to see how exactly do we use uh, uh, location in a very, very general uh, sense. Uh, uh, I work for a company called Onze, and we have developed an uh, application uh, which uh, I believe a lot of a uh, lot of users, a lot of non-geeks could actually use it. So this is a journey with respect to figuring out, uh, you know, how to translate what a lot of people uh, actually know about location. I'm, I'm sure most of us are quite familiar with the maps, but when we go outside, uh, how exactly do we? And most of the people would not even have seen maps, or if you show them a location on map, or whether and, uh, in the daily, let's say, uh, day to day life, how exactly do they uh, interpret location? So that is the kind of journey that I will uh, like to take you through. Just a brief introduction, I uh, worked at this company called Onze for two years. The company uh, came up with a, a direction-based service. So we actually uh, went ahead and created our own maps for uh, Bangalore and Chennai. We created driving direction. And as a um, prototype, we actually created this application over SMS. And over SMS itself, we learned quite a bit of uh, stuff where uh, regular non-geeks would, how would they use the service and how would they be, provide information to them which would be relevant without uh, without an aid of a map or a smartphone or even a GPS uh, device to begin with. So let's start with a very basic question. I mean, this is not something that you ask after a heavy drink or something, but basically, <laughs> Uh, where am I right now? Or if, let's say you want to go to a place, uh, what's the address of the place? How do I locate that place? Or let's say you're traveling to an uh, unknown city or something, and uh, you just want to know where exactly am I, what's my... I mean, uh, if you have a map, you have a location, but mentally, how do you align yourself, which part of the world uh, you are currently? Or rather, you're visiting a friend who is like, you know, in a remote part of the town, and he's trying to give you a direction, or you are trying to tell him that, you know, I'm at... Uh, best bakery or something uh, close by now how do I come to your uh, place. So those are the kind of interaction uh, where this kind of question often uh, comes up and it's not always the case that you have a smartphone or a GPS device to give you an answer. But even if you have such a device, what would uh, an answer would be, right? Uh, in a pure GPS sense, it will just tell you latitude of, let's say, this place. 12.967.63. But I mean, without a map to actually put this thing in perspective or in context, you it wouldn't really make a lot of sense. Um, the other thing is address. Yeah, I mean, in India, uh, address uh, does not work that much in a lot of developing countries. And as uh, Sunil was mentioning about Johannesburg and New York and, and Tokyo, where it works well. But in India, you have to have the landmarks, and landmarks are as uh, uh, this thing as a water tank, not really a big one. So address is something, uh, so this is the address that I just took it from the cartoon on the website, which once you get, you have a reasonable understanding, okay, if I've not been to this part of the town, probably I can come to, let's say, Dome Road Club and next to Dome Road Club, I may find this place, so I just uh, start. The other, obviously, if you have a, a smartphone or something, you could put it on uh, this thing and you get a perspective, okay, right, I'm right now here, I want to get to this place, then probably this is the way to go. And finally, there's something called uh, location specified, which is nothing uh, new, but uh, a lot of us actually do uh, use it. But this is in one sense what we have standardized over the years as we uh, provide our, uh, our service on SMS. That is to provide in-textual terms where exactly you are. Uh, in a manner that will actually help you reach out to that place. So this particular, uh, and this is all generated through our uh, map uh, data that we have, specifically in Bangalore and uh, Wilbur and Chennai. So it will tell you the place, it will tell you the road on which it is. This is, by the way, a local uh, name, Chankar Nag Road. I'm sure most of the maps will not provide you, it will probably do something second cross or something, but people around this place will be familiar with this road. It will provide you the locality in which this place is. It may provide you a couple of uh, landmarks based on which you will be able to come to this place. And a main road and distance from the main road from where uh, this place is. And the distance from a major junction. So once you plan. Sorry, I'm sorry, Peter. Um, how do you get this information? Do you need a platform? 
Uh, multiple things, right? Uh, in smartphone cases, yes, you give a lateral, uh, like the lateral that we saw previously, this kind of lateral, and then we have an API that will provide you uh, this information. The second thing is we also have a search engine where you specify uh, energy and research institute, and it finds out the energy and research institute is there in our map database. And so this is the location specified for, uh, for that place. So it works both GPS as well as a uh, search base. Um, now, location specified as uh, you know is uh, very very friendly in India, and this is something that we have arrived over the time, and uh, it actually works quite well in India. But why exactly location? What's the problem with uh, other thing that I talked to you about? First and foremost, the lack of obviously without the context or without the map, it doesn't really make sense. And when, even once you have a map, you actually have to pinpoint, and then depending on the you know, the granularity of the latitude and longitude, you can actually reach to that place. So, without a context, pretty much uh, useless. Postal address, I mean, uh, this particular place did have a pretty good postal address, but consider, for example, this place. Uh, Banagata Road, I don't know if you're familiar with, it's almost a 10 kilometer road. And in that 10 kilometer road, if you want to find out number 5, <laughs> and probably a couple of days, so, I mean, address works quite a bit, uh, quite well in some of the cases, but in most of the, the cases, especially in uh, India, they don't quite well. Reading maps, definitely not trivial. Uh, I should have put an iOS 6 day reading map. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and finally, I mean, uh, the location specified that we provide is, uh, you know, uh, human friendly. This is the way something that you would tell your friend to come with. If I'm sure if I would have called up Kiran and asked him how exactly to come to this place, he would definitely give me a couple of landmarks around this place to get a idea. And it gives you a mental picture, okay, I know this place, so this is probably over here, and this is probably over here. And before, let's say, even 2005, when Google actually gave us the map, we didn't have a very good idea of how Bangalore looks like on a map, but we could uh, find a way around, right? Now, interesting thing, uh, this location specifier is something that we actually generate from our um, from our map database, right? So let me get down to how exactly, what are the different components of it and how it is useful for you to uh, make sense of where you are. So first and foremost, it obviously tells you the name of the place. Uh, it may be local name as well, uh, so that when you come to this place, you what is it locally known as? Uh, the road that is that it is on. So that helps you, okay, I mean, the moment you get on Shankar Road, it should be somewhere on the road. Uh, it gives you a reasonably well-known uh, locality. So if you're coming from a far off place, you, you don't really need to have directions from that particular place. You know, first you have to reach to Dombu Second State, then you could figure it out. It gives you a couple of uh, landmarks uh, which are close to this place. Uh, now these two information, the road, the main road and intersection, that actually helps you in your uh, commute. So you know that on the HL uh, airport road, it is about uh, 300 meters off from the main junction, there is the flyover, it is about half kilometer off. So these are the roughly kind of information. And I'm sure this is not um, I mean, exhaustive, and I'm sure you could find some places which this information doesn't really make sense, but uh, definitely works more than the postal addresses uh, that work. Uh, How do you determine when they said there is a uh, Yeah, so that is the kind of, a, uh, so the survey that we carry out uh, in building the map, right? So we uh, we try to get a, and so we have a scale of one to five, right? saying that, you know, uh, one is something that is totally unknown, second is something that we think that probably in this particular road, people would know about, three is something that people in this area would know about, Four is maybe a bigger locality, five means the entire uh, city knows about. So that is the kind of guideline. So whenever we pick a uh, waypoint, we pick uh, uh, place marks in a city by creating a database, we assign that kind of a level to it. So that helps us, uh, once you get a location, when we see around what are the reasonably famous, reasonably known, and, and this is a quite subjective in nature. So at times it could go wrong. Most of the time it is correct. Can't you, uh, can't you crowdsource that, assigning that one to five, and then you know, the more number of four square seconds 
for bigger score or something like that. Probably, but I'm, I'm sure with a lot of data that could help. But I don't think we have that kind of a data, especially in Bangalore, to actually uh, help make that kind of a decision. For example, I'm sure, I mean, we get a lot of uh, check-ins for, let's say, Forum Hall or something, but to this place, which is, again, a reasonably famous, you may not get uh, that kind of thing. Now, the other alternative to uh, location specific, obviously reverse geocoding, and a lot of people do use Google's reverse geocoding. So, just to give a perspective of LS versus uh, reverse, I mean, LS is not the location specific, whereas something which works with only our map. So, it's there primarily in Bangalore and Chennai. Uh, so, this is the, the Google reverse coding of this particular latitude, longitude that Google would give you. Fourth, uh, there's the fourth main road, Dumro second stage, Bangalore. Now, and there's a big part of you know, our data collection, which I'm not touching over, but just to give you a, a brief of how uh, we organize, we, what's, what constitute our uh, map, uh, map data. And this is nothing visual. It is basically a uh, list of points of which we have latitude longitude. And in our uh, uh, web application and other application, we actually use Google Maps to overlay. So there's nothing too pretty to look at in one sense. So we have uh, uh, place marks waypoints, uh, points with accurate latitude, longitude, and a reasonable uh, amount of subjective information about the popularity of uh, that place. Then we have roads, which are essentially uh, geography lines. Uh, we have intersections. So again, I mean, when we built this database, it was primarily to provide a, a driving direction kind of a service. So a lot of emphasis is on roads and uh, intersection. And finally, locality, which is basically a poly uh, polygon, which which captures not at an accurate level, but with roads dividing a particular area, it captures the this thing of whole locality. So based on it, we have an application which is uh, very simple, which is uh, beta in one sense, which we call it Lokasi. Lokasi is uh, in Malay; it means uh, location. So. And as I told you, very simple thing. The moment you launch this application, in pure location specify sense, it will tell you. So this is something that we captured in our office in Geneva. So this is the information that it uh, tells you. It shows you on the map where exactly it is there. And then something interesting that you could do is send this location to your uh, uh, friends. Now with most of the other applications, let's say if it's a geo uh, map-based application, the other person needs to have a smartphone or at least a map on which to look. At this for this information. But what we do is, since we have found out the location uh, LS for that particular place, you could actually send this whole text as an SMS or as a basically a complete text. So even the person who is receiving it without the context of a smartphone or a map or something like that, he'll be able to get a reasonable idea of where exactly you are. <laughs> this uh, fully can. Oh, it's <laughs> it's celebrating Independence Day, that So, just to reiterate, basically, app no, application is very simple. It just tells you where you are in in terms or in context, which would actually make a lot of sense to you without any juxtaposition with the map. It helps you share your location to your friends who may not have an application or who may not have access to internet, who may not have access to uh, smartphone or any such thing to know exactly where you are and probably help you guide through uh, when, if you are visiting them. And, and a lot of questions are raised about the security of location based applications. It's pretty secure because there is a short link or something like that that you generate and you only share it with your friends. So no data actually goes out. Uh, so, so you could probably get the application. So it has a web interface also where in, uh, the short link that uh, you click on gives you a location of where exactly you are on the, on the map. Yeah, that's all. Thanks. Yeah, buying your ranch in it. So, okay, uh, just to give you a brief, uh, we started with providing driving directions in Bangalore and later on we uh, moved on to providing uh, location-based service to retail establishment. So now we have data 
across the country. But the kind of uh, granularity of uh, the places that we have, the roads that we have, the accuracy, the popularity of these places is pretty much only in Bangalore and uh, Chennai. The other places, it's not that popular. Uh, it's a road accurate, so it's not a, as the crow flight kind of distance, but actually the distance uh, that it would take you if you would travel on the road. Okay, so it is based on GPS coordinates where you calculate No, it's based on the road that you would take to reach to that place yeah, from that junction. How do you get the geometry of a road in that case? We have, the, our data has the road. So we know where the junction is, we know the places, so we know how exactly to reach to that place, we'll do a routing, and then we know the distance. In that case, why don't you provide this left side, right side, that kind of information? Yeah, we could provide. We could. Yeah. Did you use OpenStreetMaps as your base initial data, or did you build all this data yourself? Uh, when we started, uh, OpenStreetMap was not that popular, and especially in Bangalore, we did not have that kind of information. So we started building this data by uh, by ourselves. Uh, mm -hmm. Having said that, we over the last uh, one year or so, we have kind of evaluated and deployed the OpenStreetMap data. The thing that uh, the data is there, but it's all, it's very ad hoc in one sense, and we need to have some subjective uh, information about what we need to extract it. And the kind of uh, um, the demarcation that we do with, let's say, the roads, the um, the areas that we have, uh, we've seen in OpenStreetMap when people draw of, let's say, this uh, building, right, and they use uh, something called a road as a as a meta tag just because it looks pretty. So, if we try to extract this the roads from OSM, we would get the structure of this uh, institute. So, that has been a very big deterrent. But again, we are trying to uh, see how exactly to, in one sense, this is more of like a noise. So, when we extract data from OSM, how to curtail this noise and just to get under kind That would be actually a big help if we could get that. Sorry, just quick yeah. follow up question on what did you use then to generate the data? Just like, can you give us an idea of just the kind of tools to? And most of the tools were uh, uh, were generated by us. So, I mean, in a very very raw sense, we just took a couple of detailed devices, just drove around the road, captured uh, in an audio of this thing as we were driving, you know, like got back to the office, did a transcription. Very very basic. Stuff. So, how long have you been building this special map? Uh, so, this map we have not updated in let's say, last two years or so. But before that, we took. Close to about six to nine months to build the Bangalore map. Chennai we did faster because we had at least uh, at least the process was there and all once we did Bangalore. So Chennai we did about three months. And my question is going to be just in terms of keeping up to date as geography changes. Yes, yeah, that is a challenge. What your, what your maintenance plans are for how you maintain that data? Right. I mean, so we have not really done that part. So. Yeah. How expensive was it to acquire all this data yourself? Um, as I told you, Bangalore took about six to nine months approximately, so you can make an estimate. Financially, it's and Financially, I mean, it's just for a speculation, depending on how many people you put in and what kind of... Uh, how many people did you put in? <laughs> <laughs> we put down about ten people. One car, couple of laptops, couple of GPS devices, multiplied by nine months. <laughs> so it's not an easy thing, definitely. And what... what People are doing with OSM is definitely recommendable the way they're building it up. The So, uh, in the last two years or so, we have kind of moved away from providing driving direction. So, we have a service on SMS works quite well, even now. Uh, but in the last two years, we have moved on to providing a more like a location-based platform to retail businesses. So right now what we do is, uh, let's say you have a retail chain of 10 to 15 stores and you want to provide an application or uh, SMS-based stuff or a website, web plugin or something, where you can help your customers locate the nearest store. So that's the kind of uh, uh, location-based service we provide to retail businesses. You also have software? Sorry? You also have Is anyone using User base of our app. Uh, this is uh, just really about three months or so, and this is not we are. Sorry. Android app is available. Yeah, so Android app is available. A user base, I'm, I don't know, more than hundred people or something. <laughs> Nothing much. But on the SMS side, we have uh, reasonable uh, 
update. So in SMS we provide driving directions in Bangalore. You could just send SMS from KV to let's say Jayanagar to 980, 980, and it will provide your direction. So that we have a pretty big uh, update. Yes. Yeah. Uh, do you deal with like uh, misspellings, like disambiguations, like if someone misspells, how do you deal with this? Yeah, we like, do. Uh, is this at the database level or like what, do you know what you use to deal with disambiguations? Yeah, we do deal uh, with disambiguations, specifically because uh, we provide this service primarily on SMS. And on SMS, if let's say you type Majestic as M-A-G-I-S-T-I-S-K, I mean, we would need to resolve it. So we do a good amount of uh, spelling tolerance which we have built up in our system. Yes. We draw them. <laughs> yeah. What about the conventions that are being followed in the local areas? For, for, for example, both the two joints are adoption, that's what many people call it. But it's actually known as Arbindo Mar. So how do you deal with this? A lot of location, a uh, lot of local or what you call this tribal knowledge is actually built in. So once we, when we created this uh, database, we did actually take into account of what exactly this road is more popularly known as and not the official uh, name of the road. But again, it's very, very subjective, it depends from people to people, but we try to capture it as much as possible. So it does, it gives me both, if I say full block, circle, or if I say I've the market, it gives me both? Yeah. Do you have any plans in the near future to use this in smaller cities so that information isn't as consistent? Uh, or is that just still a big problem? Yeah. I mean, there are tons of stuff that we could do. So this could be probably one of them. But right now, our focus primarily is on the retail business platform. It's a non-technical question, but yeah. how do you plan to monetize your application? I mean, your monetary incentive. Right. So we were running this driving direction on SMS for close to three years now and we have not made any money on that part. So most of our focus is now on the retail platform. When provide, we provide this as a platform to retail businesses and we monetize from the retail businesses. I mean not directly from the individuals no. who are no. consuming? So the SMS based service or this particular application, I don't think, it doesn't make us money and I don't think uh, it will make money going forward. Okay, thank you man. Thanks a lot.